Indeed, following the breakthrough of Marcel Moss's essay, various researchers from an array of disciplines discussed the many aspects of what would be termed the social body. From the fractured body, through the docile body, to the post-human body, these new venues hold many important issues to designers. However, let us consider one small yet significant example, eyeglasses. Eyeglasses are a great example to consider the influence of socio-cultural context on the design object for two main reasons. First, glasses are perhaps one of the only objects that had changed its context from a medical object to a fashion accessory. When buying a pair of glasses, you go to the mall or an accessory store, not a doctor's office or a hospital. Indeed, most eyewear shops offer professional optometrists to help you choose and adjust the lenses and the way your glasses pose on your nose. Yet the frame's outline is not medical, but fashion-oriented. The case of glasses is also interesting since it is comprised of two types of ergonomics, physiologic ergonomics and sociocultural ergonomics. Designing eyeglasses from a physiological angle is highly problematic since it is the first thing one acknowledges on a person's face and it has three major points of friction with the body, the nose and behind the ears. One further point of friction is more virtual in a sense and it has to do with the framework of seeing the object appearing in our field of vision. Whether the frame is dark or light, this will have an, a meaning to the sense of contraction one feels when wearing eyeglasses. Furthermore, the lenses block or reflect to a certain extent other people's gaze into our eyes, creating a social distance of a sort. On the other hand, from a sociocultural stance, as we shall see, eyeglasses, almost from their invention, broadcasted an aura of, of sagesse, imbuing this restriction contraption with an air of empowerment. In other words, using non-prescription frames to look smarter is hardly a new phenomenon. This aspect of the glasses as a design object that is saturated with meaning and conveys identity and style can even be better understood if we examine them in relation to other objects that function as enhancers of sensory perception and communication, such as hearing aids or speaking aids. The social experience of their users is distinctly different to that of wearing eyeglasses. For whereas eyeglasses have become an almost obligatory fashion accessory in certain professional milieus, those hard of hearing or speech are viewed as suffering from a disability or from a physical or medical problem. It is interesting to note, however, that while all these instruments seem to answer essentially similar needs, they have different social meanings, and one could argue this has much to do with the notion of design. To further examine this point, let us consider the history of eyeglasses. Interestingly, when glasses were introduced in the 14th century, they were known as nose crushers. During this period, eyeglasses were designed for brief use only, and thus had no temples. Instead, they were equipped with a handle that was held by the wearer, while the glasses rested on his nose. At that time, people treated eyeglasses with suspicion and even fear. This may be due to the central position this object takes at the center of one's face and its restriction of eye contact, as mentioned before. When reading glasses came to be used for longer periods of time, they were secured using leather straps and even a string with weights on each side. During the 18th century, however, the Swiss Pierre-Louis Guinard developed an innovative serial technology to produce uniform glass lenses that eliminated bubbles and distortions on the surface. Over time, eyeglasses became a symbol of experience and wisdom and a status symbol of advancement, so much so as to lead a trend of wearing non-corrective eyeglasses as a sign of intelligence. Naturally, this convention stemmed from the use of eyeglasses by monks who were highly educated. The Duke of Milan, Francesco Sforza, for example, ordered himself a dozen pairs of non-corrective eyeglasses as a sign of his literacy and intelligence. Eyeglasses and monocles are often used in portraiture of later centuries to depict and accentuate an individual's scholarly abilities and class. In recent years, eyeglasses have once more called for their social statement in the construction of the geek chic image, where cheap and heavy frames of eyeglasses with no lenses at all are sold as a purely fashionable accessory. Hence, we can learn through the handling, ornamentation and use of eyeglasses throughout history about the contribution of design objects in creating a new physical action to borrow from us once more. Meaning the way we interpret and interact with others through our vision of the world wearing eyeglasses has created a new mode of physical action. Just think on the automatic gesture one conduct next time you look for your glasses resting on the top of your nose.